and what difference this all made and all of that. Are you okay down there? You want to sit back here? Okay, so are you all on that page? Together? Holy Spirit, you have called us to be the bearers of your love. You brought us together to feel your strength and power. We answered your call, seeking to know you better, to listen and to share, to question and to learn, to pray, meditate, and reflect. Your gifts to us are many. We have felt your steady lead. You have guided us to appreciate these gifts and to love them out of each other. We have felt the joy of magnified love revealed to us in community. So much love is possible beyond our wildest imaginings. You love us so dearly and call us anew to show others your ways by listening with loving ears, working with loving hands, and seeing with a loving heart. Holy Spirit, you know us better than we even know ourselves. Whatever the mission, we will try to do our best to be your loving hands and to remember the power of your love. Right, and the whole idea of this is to say that through this program, we learn that we're all God's blessing. Whether we're in the hospital, in our communities, in the prisons, in our own home life, taking care of loved ones, that's what God wanted us to do. Wherever your paths are, it's perfect. So it was just a question to get us all together and be together and just cherish each other. So I think you should begin because okay. she was your I classmate, know, I, but now I, she's I, in the uh, part of us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I've had a journey, and I have to say thanks to all of you for being a big support here. I'm going to cry. Class, your class was the biggest <laughs> obstacles. I mean, you yep. saw the traffic coming today. There's always yep. something mm -hmm. trying to steal our peace when we're doing something special for God. And there was a lot of misunderstanding when she was meeting the chaplain intern to meet. And that chaplain intern that helped you so much it's wonderful. wasn't she real. She volunteered here too at St. Joseph's. Well, she was coming to get her badge and get introduced. And um, then he I misunderstood. And yeah. she was so discouraged. I could see it. I was like the bridge between the two of them. They were misunderstanding each other. Tristan. And I stayed and I talked to her. And she decided to do go ahead. You know, there was just too many obstacles. She thought, oh, we this, were, this isn't supposed <coughs> to happen. We went the same day. And, and I remember meeting her all the time. It was so wonderful. <laughs> but I remember standing, my greatest memory of her is standing out in the hallway. <coughs> and um, she just stood there, and it was her first visit. And she said, Trish, I don't know what to say. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And I looked at her, and I said, I mean, you're, you, you celebrated your 80th birthday in our training, you know, and I, I just told her, I said, just go in there and smile at them and say hello, hello. and leave. What? That's enough. Yes, that, you know, is. like what you have done. Most, I, I said to most people at your yes, age are home watching television. And that's when she stood there and tears came to her. She was, Trish, that's why I took the training. That's what I was doing. And I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, she had just turned 80. She had just <clears throat> turned 80, and she found herself sitting at home. <laughs> and as she progressed, because, like I said, I went on Thursday, and she went on Thursday, and we'd meet, and i say, okay, as soon as you finish, we're going downstairs. We're going to have a free <coughs> cup of coffee. She said, you can have a free cup of coffee <laughs> downstairs. <laughs> so that was very low, and, um, you know, they don't hear that well either, so between the two of us. But after, and if, I was really very nervous in the beginning, and it was a few people I could really talk with. But then as the months go by, you know, you're really looking forward to seeing them every mm -hmm. week. And, you know, they know who you are. And you come in and you kind of like, well, I, I come into the day room now and said, hi, everybody, I'm here. You know, everybody starts <laughs> You, <smiling>. wow. <laughs> and with the, but I ha there's a, a Jewish woman there who I'm so fond of, Miriam. She's so sweet. And we sit there and we're doing the Our Father, and next I know she's doing the whole thing. She knows it by heart. Okay. So I thought, oh, Miriam, that's wonderful. <laughs> she goes to Mass every day. <laughs> I take her. 
Mm -hmm. And I said to the pastor, but you know, Jesus is Jewish. He's the one that gave us the outfit. So it's perfectly fine to say. Really? I said, yes. I said, they were all Jewish. So uh, it's a good girl, Miriam. But anyway, so we really kind of like knock around. And the ones in the room, I go in and I hug them and I touch them and they get all smiling. And I know, you know, in the books and say, don't touch anybody. But they really want this. Sure, this as long as that's okay with them, right. Touching. And that's, that's, you know, that just mm -hmm. gives them if somebody really cares when they cares mm -hmm. the room. So that's how minds kind of come to the And there's certain people that like to talk, and there's certain people just like not there. And there's one lady in the day room, she sits down and never says a word. And I noticed one day that she was doing the jumbo on news day. And, said, wow, that's pretty cool. mm. and she got them all right. Wow, I couldn't get that word this morning. <laughs> and she'd look at me. I said, you really do this? You an English teacher or something? And she didn't say anything. But every week I go in now, we go over with the jumbo, and I bring mine in. And then she started like, and she start, and she finally started talking. I said, "Wow, I'm stuck on that word," and she had like, this big grin on her face. But wow. anyway, so that's how I'm kind of breaking in with her. Mm -hmm. And now when I went to the, they had a big, um, like communion. Oh, the re, uh, the rededication Sunday. Nice. So I went to that. And she was in the wheelchair when the other end of the room and she waved when I came in. So it was nice. Like now they feel comfortable with you and I'm feeling a little bit better. But it's very lonely. There's nobody. I have there. a problem with, I'm working with the Alzheimer's. You come in, somebody has Alzheimer's. No problem on my end. But I have a problem with the staff and even the families. I walked into a room last week and there was a woman and I knew that she was Hispanic because I had met... I come in, I say, good morning, I'm Linda, the spiritual care companion in my friendly way. Daughter's standing, she has Alzheimer's. Mm. So I just looked, no, she has dementia. Mm -hmm. So I looked at her and the daughter and I said, God loves everybody. Good for you. Those were my words. Mm -hmm. And then I looked, forget the daughter, I looked, and I said, can I give you my blessing? Now, I don't speak Spanish, but I said, Dios. Oh, yes, and I give my famous Jewish blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and grant you peace. If it's a Jewish patient, I finish up with something in Yiddish, which is zaygezunt, which means be healthy. And they smile. When somebody says to me, can you do communion? I say, no, I'm Jewish, but I'll give you a blessing with chicken soup flavor. <laughs> and they left. This woman was radiating. I went in on today's, I went in on Friday, and I go into a room, and there's an older man, and he looks at me. He had dementia. And he says to me, I'm in the hospital. My mother and father, and this has got to be a man well into his 80s, my mother and father were on the eighth floor, and I want to go up and be with them. And I stood back, and I said, God, please help me. Mm. And I said, well, I don't work on the eighth floor. Okay. I said, well, I want to go there. I said, well, York, and I didn't know his condition. I said, but you need to be on, and he was in telemetry, you need to be in telemetry because this is where they can help you. Well, what am I going to do about my mother and father? And I wasn't going to go out and say, I'm going to go up and find out that they are and come back. I said, I don't work on the eighth floor, so I wish I could help you, but I couldn't. Mm. But you will be taken care of. And then I, can, I gave him a blessing, and he smiled. And to me, that was dealing with his dementia and trying to help his anxiety. <coughs> Third thing, and I don't want to talk too much. I had a problem with a patient that I got involved with. You said you leave them here. There was a youngish <laughs> woman. I gave her a Hebrew name, Dahlia, so I'm not explaining away, any, not telling you anything about her. Very often when you pray for a Jewish person, when you do what is called a Misha Beirach, and I'll explain that, you have to have a Hebrew name. So someone who is not Jewish, you give them a Hebrew name, like, like uh, Patricia would be Penina Bat Avraham. Patricia, daughter of Abraham. So I gave this woman a Hebrew name, and I went back four times. Mistake. Yeah. Mistake. Yeah because I became emotionally involved. Yeah. Yeah. The sister, they knew I was Jewish, the sister said, would you pray for her in synagogue? And I did, every Saturday for four weeks. 
the sister called me on a Saturday morning to say she passed. Would I do the Kaddish for her? Which I did. Mm -hmm. So, of course, my rabbi came over. To, he's not my rabbi anymore. The rabbi came over to me and said to me, Is somebody, did somebody die? And I said, one of my patients. And it took me a good number of weeks to get over the loss of this young yeah. woman. I'm not doing that again. Somebody else tell me, make a yeah. suggestion. I became too involved. Mm -hmm. For a good number, it was about four weeks after that, I kept doing the memorial prayer for her, and then I stopped. Not about I said, Lynn, anything, tell us anything. Um, well, first of all, I said to Trish a number of times, I appreciate receiving that moment of prayer each day, especially since I haven't been well. Um, I was fortunate to minister at Mercy Medical Center in the oncology unit. Oh, God. And I was very concerned in the beginning about the relationship with the chaplains. And uh, the very first day, I met Sister Norma Jean, who took me around and on a tour of the hospital. And uh, I, I, when I was working at the desk, I always sat next to her. So if something came up that I thought my, she should know or that I mm -hmm. wanted some yeah, information on, I would always <laughs> consult her. So that put my mind to rest about the relationship between the chaplain and the spiritual care companion. Um, in the oncology unit, uh, I would sometimes, week after week, see the same persons yeah. and really, you know, accompany them on their journey. And then I would come on a given <laughs> Wednesday and the bed would be empty. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. know that that person was no longer with us. Mm -hmm. um, I found the course that we took here very helpful. So often when I would be in a situation, an individual situation, something would come back to me, some activity we had done here or something that was said or shared in the group. So I feel that um, I, I felt confident when I started out because I felt I had the equipment that I needed mm -hmm. to, um, to do that particular ministry. And I would certainly hope I can return to it. Um, I found the nurses to be especially caring. I found the other volunteers on the floor that I got to know Mm -hmm. uh, very, very pleasant, very friendly, and very generous with their services. So um, Wednesday was my day, and I usually got there at about 10. Maybe I stayed until 1 or 1.30. Oh, wow. And then uh, it didn't seem long, though. It, you know, I tried to go down the whole list, but I didn't <coughs> get to everybody. But some people, of course, were not, not there. And, you know, so when you, mm -hmm. count, you counted the numbers, the numbers were always less than the number of patients on the list. But I thought it was a good match for me. And um, as I said, I would, you know, welcome the opportunity when I feel better. Excuse me, I had uh, worked for about three months at uh, Good Sam in their dialysis unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would, there would be about 15 to 16 patients that I would see in like a two hour period of time. and. And I worked there for about three months, and so it was pretty much the same patients day in and day out, but each each patient was different, okay? Uh, and uh, so you'd, you'd go to one, and, and they were uh, very outgoing, they wanted to talk and you'd discuss things, and uh, some of them had good family support, and where they had good family support, you could, you know, dialogue with them about what was going on in their family and so forth. And then you had others who, who had little or no family support, okay? And uh, th those you would work with and uh, you would try to draw them out. And like you say, whether it be memories or uh, bringing in this fact or that fact. And uh, uh, so I got to know all of them. And some of them in the beginning, <clears throat> you would go to them and uh, they would either close their eyes, pretend they were sleeping. So. <laughs> so that you would pass them by. Mm. <clears throat> but what happened over a period of time is even most of these, uh, because of my interactions with other patients around them, uh, eventually would open their eyes mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could mm -hmm. at least sure have a little conversation. Stay in the sun, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember this one fella, uh, he was a, a big black fella. He was probably twice the size of well, all of us here at this one. I mean, this guy was big. I was for a tour. And, uh, and, and probably 45, 50, something like that. 
and uh, uh, for weeks I would go over to him and he would either just close his eyes or just, you know, okay, so I would go on, give him a little blessing and then move on. Uh, in, in the last few weeks that I was there, uh, I went over to him one day and uh, we finally began to speak. Okay, and uh, I told him who I was, and he told me who he was, and asked him how things were going and what have you. Well, come to find out, he was waiting for a kidney transplant. Okay, mm -hmm. and the last week I was there would have been his last week there because he was then going to receive his kidney in a day or two. Okay, so uh, but it, it was it was a, it was a good experience. Uh, but it was, it was an intense experience also, okay? Uh, I, I would find at the end of that two hour period, I was, I was drained. Exhaustion. Oh, okay? absolutely. Because you, you know, mm -hmm. it became, uh, you know, really an intense experience mm -hmm. dealing yeah. with each mm -hmm. and every patient. Uh, but uh, they were good. They, uh, as with the patients in the nursing home, they began to look forward to you coming by, and you would get to know them, you knew their names, uh, uh, some of them you knew their family background, and, okay. and you began to relate. And it, it was good. Uh, for personal reasons, I, I, I had to uh, stop, uh, but I've been busy in my community with uh, transportation, one-on-one uh, -on -one transportation, and. I, I do enjoy that because, uh, again, many of these people, they either live alone or they have very little family background or support. So you're, uh, you're really providing an element of support to these people also. And sure. you get to know them over this one hour or two hours, whatever it happens to be. Uh, and then on top of that, I've got a few elderly neighbors <laughs> uh, you know, who my wife and I are involved with also. So uh, I've been busy, but uh, uh, hopefully there's a new project uh, that Trish was talking to me about that, that I can get involved with that. So, you know. Really? No, but, but, so. but you need the support, and we're grateful that you've been but, part of us. You know, uh, we're all deacons, uh, the six deacons. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. And what I've learned here with, with everybody, and, and Trish and Carol, I passed that on. I passed it on. I, I, the yeah. sheets that were yeah. given out, oh, I right. passed oh, yes. on too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've really been learning a lot. And we sit down and talk. Uh, it's not easy out there. Yeah. Ah. But it's low. Do Riverhead? Riverhead? On a bad case, they'll send me out the Riverhead. Okay. So, John, do you work one on one or do yes. you work with a group or one on one? Oh, no, one and on you one actually one go one into the cell? Of honoring the people, even though they, you know, we all make mistakes. Oh, all of us God's different, children. Different degrees, obviously. Sure. But, but clearly there was a, an episode in their life or circumstances that created. I very much believed in the course when I saw it advertised, and that's mm -hmm. when it came. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm very happy that I completed it. But 10 years uh, before that, I was doing senior respite work, and I'm still doing it now. Good. I'm in my 12th year. Good. Wow. And one of my clients is a 93-year-old Jewish man, mm. and he has all types. Mm. And mo a lot of the people that I've um, been present with over the 12 years have had all types or dementia. And they've all had some problem. The thing is about my work is that people need a break, the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So our, yeah. my company that I work for goes in and evaluates it. And um, if it works out, then myself or someone else goes in and gives the caregiver a chance to get out every week for a number yes. of two hours, mm -hmm. four hours, six mm -hmm. hours, whatever. <coughs> so I had one woman for nine years. Wow. Uh, I had other, nice. women, other people, but I had this woman for nine years. Wow. And then she passed away. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in touch, and that was several years ago, I'm still in touch with her daughter because her daughter is grateful for the help that sure. I was able to give her sure. father. Sure. And he's in his 90s and he still drives locally. <laughs> but anyway, um, the thing is that this course has only deepened my compassion yeah. for people. <clears throat> And I'm able to put that into practice in, I would say, everyday life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk too much about this because I feel I'm welling up. <laughs> but 
um, my husband has some problems. And those problems um, are shifting. Some of them are abetting and some of them are getting worse mm -hmm. or new, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I am able to keep the steady course with some help. Uh, a couple of months ago, I found the stress was getting to me and I didn't have any way to vent. It is not something you talk about with people, as far as I'm concerned. But I found a place at Hofstra University called Strasbourg Clinic. Oh, really? The Strasbourg Center wow. in Hofstra. Good. And the uh, man in charge, the, well, the man in charge, Dr. Joseph Matta, M-A-T-T-A, he oh. came to our library and he was talking about his services. And most of the people that came uh, were there for help with Storm Sandy, mm. help. Okay. And uh, he said, talk to each other, share your stories, mm -hmm. support each other. Mm -hmm. But I was there for a different reason, so I didn't speak up. And I didn't know how much it would cost to go to get the help, mm -hmm. but I found out when he came back, that was February, they came back in April. He said, you know, it doesn't cost anything to come. And, nice. Uh, get Good stress enough. relief. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what is nice. stress relief? Well, that's what I went for. Yeah. Because I was under stress that I couldn't handle on my own. Right. And that's because of and it's free? life changes. Yeah, what is what is the Strasburg? Strasburg <laughs> Clinic. What's Strasburg? Strasburg? It's in Hofstra. Yeah. Hofstra. 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 It's for uh, psych psychological counseling or for? I would say yes, but oh. I mean, uh, I don't know how, I forget how many years, not too many years, has it been in operation. But they tell you how to deal with stress or? Well, I'd like to skip over it or that right now. Things yes, that would yes, help yes, you yes, with yes. your stress? I'd like to skip over that word right now. Okay. It was the people I met. We all need reinforcement when it comes to our spiritual development, and being surrounded by people who understand that is a grace from God. Thank you, Carol, Trish, Joe, Andrew, for your guidance. I wish God's blessings on all my fellow spiritual care companion classmates. Oh, Lovely. That's nice. oh. That should be printed in the newsletter. <laughs> That's just, just yeah. we'll see. What do you think? Being the pudding monster. Rich <laughs> just came <laughs> in. I don't know. Uh, fast and rich don't go together. I'm teasing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, uh, I have Agent Orange. And, you uh, have yeah, Orange, huh? it, uh, it affects your throat. Oh. Uh, by the time we realized it, it took me eight months. Oh, uh, I couldn't breathe for eight every day. Wow, my goodness. Oh, my. You had to, it just stopped your Tight. breath. So it's like holding your breath for uh, all day. When we found out what it was, um, I still know it's Agent Orange, but um, they, it's a German arthritis that affects your throat. So the only thing that stops you or, or clears it, and it takes a lot of mucus in your throat and wow. infection and drains this, I'll give you a short version. Uh, doctors found out what it was. So I had to take steroids. Oh, this yeah. is why I'm still giving communion here, as difficult it was. Uh, when you take steroids, it affects your head, plays with your head. Oh, yes. well, the well, only way to stop it, it had to take about um, a thousand milligrams, three straight days. Oh, wow. So uh, when eight months, I can't tell anything but all just to catch my breath. I live by myself. When I found out what I could get breathing, um, I started taking the steroids, it affected. But then I was so thankful that I could breathe. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I had to do. I tried to tell my sons everything. So I'm telling all of this, now they thought I'm crazy. I said, I'm not crazy. There's a lot of information I gotta give to you. So to make a long story short, one of the girls over there, uh, Peggy, she must have thought I was going crazy. Peggy next door. Because yeah. I was trying to go to the thing. Where were you in Good Sam? Consolation. At Good Sam, Sam, yeah. Good Sam. So my sons told me, slow down because you've taken too sure, much. Sure. Just take care of your grandson. So I said, okay. After that, I finally got out of the steroids. So I figured everything was fine. Uh, my son says, we don't want you to do that anymore. Go to the hospital. I, said, I spent a lot of time. 
and I paid a lot of money, uh, three years to do this. And now I got here, now you want me to just stop it? You have to see him. And the stupidest thing, uh, yeah, he, was he told me, my son, said, I, we don't want you to do it anymore. Because I was in the cavalry. Wounded warriors. They, uh, they needed somebody to be a chaplain to help say prayers. Wow. So they asked Who's me, this as an American Legion on a motorcycle, wow. they want me to be a chaplain so I can do wow. say prayers for them. I wish I, I'm sorry I'm going to do that. But Father is in charge of it. Father Anthony Tutatoni, and he got a little sick. So now, thank God he's doing well. I'm seeing him, and that's why I'm there. I'm also, I told you, with the honor guard. So at the end of June, I start riding how to ride horses to do funerals for the funeral. And that's the story. Now, does Father Anthony ride a motorcycle? Wow. No, no, Father Anthony is just in charge of all the chaplains. So when I told him I didn't graduate to become a chaplain, he said, no, all they need is a chaplains to say prayers at the meeting. Right. That's great. Okay, so I think we're all <coughs> doing ministry in one manner, shape, or form. I was going to say another thing to you. First of all, we thank God you're breathing well. Indeed. Right. Okay? I don't know about that. But well, you're talking a lot. You're walking, you're talking, and you're there. <coughs> Secondly, I want to say that my husband's American Legion post uh, the chaplain for many, many years Where? is a Jewish person. I'll tell you that in a minute. A Jewish man. Oh, and he's yet. a wonderful chaplain. And nobody else wanted to do it, so he stayed on. They just found someone else to do it this year, but he's been doing it for about 10 years or more. And uh, the other person that's doing it is a former commander. So, but chaplains can be chaplains. <laughs> they well, can do what they have to do. It, it's why all these people uh, have the same thing. We all have one God, uh, whether it's Christian or Jewish. Jewish, or it makes no difference. Right. The thing is that we help each other, right. uh, yeah. and we continue with all this religion. Right. You know, and we didn't okay. have any of the calamities in our lives, would we ask God for help, or would we just go along and take God for granted? It's kind of like, uh, you know, almost a, a way to get our attention. And it does. And we know we're not here forever, but we are, you know, graced to have one another. I hope you found this helpful today oh, to do the reunion. We have to thank Joe it Andrew. It's all thank her you. idea. Thank you so much. And she brought us all the cold cuts. And thank you for all of you that brought all the good goodies and everything. And um, you should do this every year. Well, all right. We we this I you're the first I class. You were the first big well, class that we had. Again, definitely. Hurts that happen every day. So many heartaches that pierce the soul. So much pain that won't ever go away. How do we make it better? How do we make it through? What can we do when there's nothing we can do? We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside, we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we are there for each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Nobody really wants to fight. Nobody really wants to go to war. If everyone wants to make things right, then what are we always fighting for? Does anybody want to see it? Does nobody understand? The power to heal is right here in our hands. We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside, we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we are kind to each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. And it's not enough to talk about it, not enough to sing a song. We must walk the walk about it. You and I, do or die, we've got to try to get along. We can be kind, we can take care of each other, we can remember that deep down inside, we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we are kind to each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. And maybe we'll find true peace of mind if we always remember we can be kind. You don't have a copy of that, but you do have a copy uh, inside of this. 
Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient on being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it might take a very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today. What time, that is to say, grace and circumstances acting on your own goodwill will make you tomorrow. Only God can say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of your believing that his hand is leading you and of accepting the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete.